I lost 10 pounds the first day. And, uh, no, and I, I wanted to tell the people, I thought, well, why don't y'all just put a fan up? I mean, you're under a tin building, you're sitting kind of outside, and you're thinking somebody would have enough initiative just to put one of them fans up. But they don't, none of them hardly, unless they're upscale, have a fan even. No air conditioning. And so you learn right quick that you kind of adapt and uh, eat beans and rice. And I don't, and the beans they had was black beans. I do not like black beans. But I learned with the right seasoning, you can learn to like them. And uh, so I learned to like them and put a lot, I had, I had them put a lot of onions in them and put them with the rice and, and, uh, and you have that for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And so it was good. But I went through a learning experience. And, uh, but I also began to think about our covenant rights. I began to think about we, there was big homes down there and everything that, uh, that used to sell for a million dollars now sell for three hundred and two hundred thousand. So all areas of the world have been hit with the economic crash of which our nation was a big part of causing. And that really makes you real favorable on the world scene when you're an American. And, uh, I mean, we wasn't too uh, popular anyway. But anyway, what I'm saying is I thought that should not affect us in an adverse way. It should affect us in a positive way if we pray and ask God how to maximize the situation we're in, how to allow His covenant to manifest, and how we can operate in an area uh, all anywhere in the world you want to go there's tremendous investments to be made, and the church is the ones that should be making them. I've been saying this for three years. And so I want to encourage you in Deuteronomy 8.18, it says this. Let me, let me find it. Oh, did y'all hear about that couple from China that moved over? And then I'll tell you another one then. Did you hear about that couple back in Texas? Y'all didn't hear this. Well, they had several children. And their name was, the man's name was Ray, her name was Rita. And they always talked and how God blessed them with their children. And, uh, but they heard that in the United States of America, that every twelfth child was Japanese. And so they, they had 11 children and so she said, I better go and get a hysterectomy because uh, we don't know how to speak Japanese. Said every 12th child Japanese, uh, we won't know how to raise them. I get the same response when I'm trying to preach the word. Uh, <laughs> goes right over your head, doesn't it? Every twelfth child was Japanese. And so, uh, so they thought they better not have the twelfth child because they wouldn't know how to speak to it in Japanese. I'm sorry. Let me get back to what I'm doing here. Deuteronomy 8.18. Now, any of y'all come here, we're trying to knock down the old religious cows. 
the old wine skins that try to make you get upset about every little thing that ain't exactly the way you think it ought to be in church. If you come to church here long, you'll understand that we work at that every week. It'll rob you of your joy more than anything. Just let the joy of the Lord, the Holy Ghost, Jesus, God's big enough to handle things. If we just keep going for the Word, let the joy of the Lord be our strength. Let me read this to you. I'm going to start back up in, uh, he's kind of give them a little bit of a scold in here. Men are always, they have a tendency to want to get involved and take the glory of God from God. And that, that's not a very good uh, way to operate. Our pride begins to build up. And we begin to, to say, here, look what I've done. And look at what I'm doing. And look what I, my brain power and all my stuff I've done. Well, that's what they're doing. And they they just got fed for 40 years in wilderness. Let me, let me tell you. He said, Beware lest you say in your mind or heart, My power and the might of my hand have gotten me this wealth. He said he'd been feeding them. He said, Who fed you in the wilderness with manna, which your fathers did not know, that he might humble you and test you to do good in the end? And beware lest you say, in your mind or heart, my power and the might of my hand have gotten me this wealth. You know, we got to be careful in this move of God that we don't get focused on a man or a woman. It is God who is moving through the congregation. It is God that brings the presence to bring transformation. It is God that gives increase. We sow and we water. God always gives an increase. We've got to always be quick, no matter if it's your job, your business, or whatever. We can't say, look at me. We say, look at God. He used me, of course, and he used you. But He, it is God through us that things are accomplished. It's through the anointing of God, the presence of God, and we need to give him the credit. Amen? He said, but you shall earnestly remember the Lord your God. For it is he who gives you power to get wealth. That, and I've never understood why people had a problem with this scripture. God just saying, look, it's always been this way, and it's always going to be this way. I'm the one that gives you the power to get the wealth, so that my covenant, it says, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. And if you forget the Lord your God, don't. I'm going to go ahead and read this. I don't want y'all to stop laughing, but it's harder to laugh in this verse. But if you forget the Lord your God and walk after other gods and serve them and worship them, I testify against you this day that you will surely perish. So there's one God. We, uh, we uh, met some folks that were kind of, I don't know what they were, but, but I had to straighten them out about Israel. I'm trying, you know, I'm trying to relax. And uh, this woman said, don't you think Israel's causing all the problem in the Middle East? I said, I'm glad you asked me that question. I can tell you've been misinformed. I said, Israel is the answer. The devil using a boss or whatever you call them, a moss, uh, all the, the spirit of Antichrist movement trying to destroy Israel, trying to take their land away, trying to divide Jerusalem again, do all that kind. That's of the devil. Just if they'd back off, which they won't back off, I know that, well, then we wouldn't have a problem. But I said, you better watch out pretty soon because Amazinajad, or whatever his name is, why do they have their names like it's so very hard for a Texan to pronounce them. You know, Iran and their deal. They said, look, if you even make one move toward us, 
You won't last a week. We will annihilate Israel. That come across the waves this week. We will annihilate.